Welcome to the Longmont Overall Sew Along. Meg and I are gonna be showing you how to make these adorable Longmont overalls. Mm -hmm. I love them so much. Oh I've made goodness. so many. Yes, I know, <laughs> and it, they come together so quick. I was really kind of blown away at how fast they came together. Mm -hmm. And they're so comfy and comfortable. Oh yeah, you can wear them with crop tops, long sleeves, short sleeves. Puffy sleeves. You know, <laughs> to the beach over a bathing suit. They're so versatile and they're also inclusive. They are in of sizes zero to 34. Mm -hmm. And check the finished measurements for your size in the pattern instructions. They're meant to be a little bit better. So it runs a little bit large, but I would definitely base your size off of your hip circumference because that's the widest part in the overalls. Yep. Well, now let's talk fabric. Yes. So this, it doesn't actually take a lot of fabric. No. Um, depending on your size that you choose, you can go between two and a half to four yards. And that also depends on the width of the fabric that you have. And you also want to make sure that you get a light to medium weight fabric. We were lucky enough to get this fabric from Robert Kaufman Fabrics. And uh, we're going to be doing our sample in this beautiful beautiful. It's from their House of Denim, from the Intego Denim. And then uh, I was able to also do some in this linen. So you just want something that's kind of a light to medium weight. And mm -hmm. then uh, the ones I'm wearing are actually pinstriped, which I love. Mm -hmm. All right. Now tell me about yours. Yes. Denim <laughs> is also a classic denim mm -hmm. overalls. Perfect. But I decided to go thrifting and I found this really cool printed vintage fabric and I thought, let's have some fun with these overalls. Yes. <laughs> oh, and they are so cute. Yes. All and right. you can't have overalls without hardware. Yes. So hammer in some tools and use things like overall buckles. And Dritz actually has overall buckles that really make it look store bought. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that, you can use, you know, rivets, you can use buttons, a button and button hole, velcro. Velcro, snaps, everything in between. You'll just need the appropriate tools for your application, like a hammer and some setting tools and marking tools and, of course, some needles and an owl and marking pens and pins. So everything you need is laid out here, but you can adapt it for what you already have in your studio. Yeah, even a cute little label, just so you know that they are handmade. That's <laughs> right. Now, and I went ahead and I surged my seams, my finished seams, uh, but you can use the zigzag stitch as well. And we are going to be using a conventional sewing machine. We're going to be using the lovely designer Ruby 90 that we've got here, um, just for the rest of the construction steps. Mm -hmm. So the first step is to print and tile your pattern. Cut your pattern pieces from your fabric. And if you have a directional print, also make sure to keep that nap in mind. Yes. There's six pattern pieces total and let's get started let's jump in and sew these long knot overalls so the first steps are to stitch the overall side seams and in seams together so I have both my right and left overalls with the back and the front sewn together so stitch them and finish your seam allowances either together or open and press and after that is complete, we need to sew the crotch seam. So this is easy to do, is you take one of the sides and you turn it right side out. So you'll have one wrong side out and one right side out. And the first pin you put in is right at that crotch point. So I'm gonna take my right side out, overall side, and insert it into the other and I'm going to pin my crotch seams together and to make sure they are nice and flush and flat when stitching push your seam allowance away from you and towards you on either side so you're going to have them laying in different directions and that really gets a nice crisp seam matching so I'm just going to pin that crotch point right there and then I'm just going to work my way up and pin my crotch curves all together from the top front all the way to the top back. And then you're just gonna stitch them in a U. So once your seam is stitched together, serge or finish your allowances together and then press to one side. So now I'm going to pass these on to Ginger for the next step. 
Thanks, Meg. All right, I'm gonna set these over here for right now. We're gonna talk straps. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cut out your strap pieces. And um, you can make these a little bit longer when you're cutting out your pattern pieces in case you want some longer straps to work with. Um, we're gonna take one and we're gonna fold them right sides together, which I have here. And you're gonna sew along the long edge of the strap and uh, you're going to sew at a fourth of an inch but then you're going to go in and you're going to want to trim this down so you can see I trimmed it down pretty tight about an eighth of an inch um, so once you've got that next comes the fun part you're going to want to turn those straps so what you're going to do I've got a sample here if you have a strap turner um, or a fabric turner go ahead and use that but if you don't you can always use a safety pin. This is always a, a good method. And um, this denim is pretty easy to pull through and the straps are pretty wide, so it shouldn't be too difficult. But I'm gonna show you real quick how to do this. So what you're gonna do is just kind of get it started in there. We're gonna poke that in and just start feeling your way through. You're gonna pull all the way. See how it wrinkles up there? Make sure you get those ends in. And just keep on tugging. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna pull your strap through and if you've got a nice big enough safety pin, that is going to help you as well. So just keep pulling that. All right, gonna bunch it up and pull. And just keep pulling until it is all the way through. And when that safety pin comes out on the other end, just keep pulling it through and it's like magic. It just comes all the way out on the other end. All right, and then just give it a nice shake there and you can take your safety pin off. Okay, and then what you're going to do, and I've actually got a finished one here that you can take a look at. Um, you are going to line this up. This is actually gonna be the wrong side of your strap now, and you see how that lines up there, and you're gonna wanna give that a nice good press, just keeping that line as straight as you possibly can. All right, so give that a nice flat press and this is what it's ultimately gonna look like and you wanna make sure that you do that for both of those straps. Okay, so now let's bring out our overalls. What you wanna do is you wanna lay your overalls out with your back facing towards you, right sides up. So you've got that, you can see the back of your overalls. And what you are going to do, these have a wonderful crisscross uh, in the back. So I'm gonna take both of these, this is the one. And what you wanna do is on the outside here, you want to measure out what your seam allowance is going to be. So that way you've got enough room there and you want them to have, be on an angle. You want your straps to be on an angle. You're gonna wanna take your strap and lay it wrong side up on there. And we're gonna measure out five eighths of an inch for your seam allowance. And we're gonna put that right there like that and put it on a nice angle. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pin that. Okay, so we've got the first strap on. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Make sure that's face down and we'll be about five eighths of an inch. We wanna make sure just we're in that seam allowance. I'm gonna go ahead and pin that and then what you will do is you will take this over to the sewing machine and we're just gonna do a basting stitch to keep these in place. So you'll go right across there and right across there. And now Meg is gonna show you how to put that facing on. It's all up to you, Meg. So once our straps are basted in place, I just went ahead and just trimmed out those corners so I have a nice flush and straight edge. And I also just pin the crisscross together um, because I like to adjust it once I try it on, but just to keep them in that, uh, in that position for when we sew on the facing. And speaking of facings, I have both my front and back facing pieces right here. And you're going to want to press a quarter of an inch up on the bottom edge of the facing on both the front and the back. And the front facing is the more straight rectangular piece and the back facing has that smaller shaping to it. Just grab back your overalls and laying right side up on your table, take your pressed facing and this is my back and I'm going to lay my facing right sides together with my piece and just pin around and making sure when I pin to my edge, I'm catching that pressed edge that we did. And you wanna make sure you're sandwiching your straps in there too. So you're just gonna go ahead and stitch up 
pivot at the corners and then stitch back down. So I have my front all complete. So you can see here is my facing stitch from the wrong side and the right side with those edges nice and pressed and caught in that seam. So now I'm gonna take my scissors and I am actually going to trim my allowance. I'm gonna start just above this fold here and I am going to grade them down and I'm going to clip my corners. So once you have the allowance around your facing graded, we're gonna flip it to the right side and give it a press. But to get these points nice and sharp, we need a point turner, Ginger. Oh, I knew it. Oh, green too. <laughs> and we're just gonna poke these corners gently using an awl or a point turner, whatever sharp device you have in your studio. And I like to roll my seams just to make sure it's nice and flat and flush on that edge. So I'm just gonna press around. So once that is pressed, you can continue to actually press this edge under a quarter of an inch and then another quarter of an inch and it transitions nicely into the bottom of the facing. So I'm just going to wrap around and press. And this is why we don't trim back the allowance along that edge. And as I press, I like to just pin to keep it in place until I top stitch it. So just work all the way around and even trimming all that back facing and doing this finish all along both of these edges here. So once I have all the pressing done around all of these edges, I am just going to top stitch from the right side. I always like to top stitch with the right side up so I know what the stitch is going to look like. And you can even just change out your, your thread for a top stitching thread as well and leave your bobbin as is. So I'm gonna top stitch all along here, pivoting at those corners, and then also top stitching my facing pressed edges down as well. So now next we have the most fun part, I think, but I'm gonna let Ginger handle this one because it is the pockets. All right, so Meg has been busy. I'm gonna show you guys what she was up to. She actually did this beautiful top stitching all along the edges here. I love it in this gold. It really gives that nice professional look um, to these denim overalls. But she has gone all the way up and around over here around these edges and then check this out. She has actually done on the back here, cute little diamonds. So you can definitely have some fun with that right there. Now we are gonna move on to my favorite part of these overalls and that is the pockets. Um, so I've got some already set up here, but you're going to go ahead and lay those out. And first thing you're gonna do is you are gonna actually fold right sides together. Go ahead and fold on the marking that's actually um, in your pattern. And then you're gonna just fold it up wrong sides together about a fourth of an inch. So that is prepping for that because our next step, which I happen to have done here, is we're gonna be stitching these. So what you're gonna do, this is really kind of a neat little trick here, is you are going to 
in a regular straight stitch, just go ahead and stitch all the way down and make sure you lock those edges on both sides there. Then what you're going to do is you're going to change your stitch length and you want to make it kind of a basting stitch length and you're going to stay within that seam allowance and go all the way around. And what this is going to do is it's going to give you a nice stay stitch. So after you get your stay stitching done, then the next step is kind of like magic. What you want to do, it's similar to what you did when you were flipping your um, facing. You want to go ahead and pull that up. I clipped my edges, um, got them nice um, and thin. You're going to flip it around like that and you get that. So get my nice, go ahead and get those edges out. Careful, make it nice and gentle. Get those good. And then what we are going to do, this is where the stay stitching comes in handy. We are going to press this nice and flat. You want to just get that seam going there. All right. All right, and once you get that done, this is where the stay stitching really is effective. You wanna go ahead and you're going to see where that line is and you're going to just press it all along there. So let's go ahead and press that one. Then you wanna to go to the other side and kinda of just sandwich it all the way around like that. So you get these nice little presses in there. And you're going to want to fold that one in. And then we've got this side. And that stay stitching really does give you a nice mark so that way you have that consistent seam allowance all the way around. All right, and then just get that bottom edge. So you want that nice and clean and then there is your pocket ready to be put on your overalls. All right, and then once you have that all pressed, what you are going to do is do some top stitching across the top there so you can keep that nice and solid. All right, next up, we are gonna be attaching the pockets to the overalls. I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. All right, so I have gone ahead and I have pinned my pocket on, but let me give you a few little tips when you're pinning your pocket on. You have this center seam right here, which is perfect for lining up your pocket. And what you wanna do is just fold your pocket in half. You wanna find the center of that. You can do a little crease and mark that and just lay it right on top of there. And what's fun with this is, you know, they I think they do have markings in the pattern that you can go by, but you can make it your own and you can kind of go up and down. You can put it a little bit lower. You can bring it up higher. You know, wherever you decide you want to put your pocket, that's where it belongs. All right, so I'm going to show you guys how to sew this on. And we are going to be heading into here. I am going to line this up. We're going to be at about a fourth of an inch or so, between a fourth and an eighth of an inch. You can line that up there. And I love this machine. You just tap it and it goes down. It's so great. And there's a lot of pivoting in this process right here. And you just need to be patient and take your time. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, and just follow it all the way around. All right, you get to that point. And we're going to pivot there. Go down again. All right, and what's nice with this uh, seam allowance, when you get to that corner, it's really easy to tell so you can match your seam allowances up. And I'm gonna tap my machine again, pivot. And start up again. Make sure that you're nice and flat. You don't wanna make sure you're getting any of the overall parts underneath your pocket. Okay. Pivot again. All right, when you get to the end, you are just gonna do a quick little back stitch. Make sure you lock that in so those pockets stay nice and tight. And 
because these are nice in denim, everybody loves a bar tack on some denim overalls. You could also do a bar tack there if you want to as well. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. See how our pocket turned out. And it's great, I love it. All right, so we've got our top pocket done. Now, this is a great opportunity for you to go ahead and throw those overalls on, try them on, and see where you want those side pockets to fall. Everybody's got different arm lengths, so uh, that's the joy of making your own stuff is that you get to choose where you put it so it fits you perfectly. So you wanna do the same exact process. Um, you've yet again, you've got that nice seam that you can use in order to uh, you know, line up those pockets and you can use the marks that are on the pattern to do that. So that is how you get these pockets in good shape and you definitely are gonna, it's one of the best things about these overalls. Next up, Meg's gonna join me and we are gonna finish these overalls. I can't wait. Oh, there's two. Uh, I'll take go. this one. All right. <laughs> oh, these are already done. Yes. All right. Here, let's lay them out so we can show everybody. Yeah. Let me show you what I've been yeah. up to. I actually was able to go in. These are so easy to hem. It's super simple. All you want to do is just fold it up uh, about like about a half an inch or so and press that and then fold it one more time about another inch and a half and then you wanna stitch all the way around and boom, your hem is done. And wow. what's nice is you can try them on, figure out what length you yeah. want them at. You can make them culottes, you can make them you know, as long as you want and it's wonderful to do that. Oh, I think I need to make a romper pair. I need, Ooh, yeah. I need some romper overalls for definitely, sure. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. All right, we're moving on to hardware. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't have a ton of experience with it, but I know you do. So I'm gonna let you handle this one and uh, show us what we need to do. Yeah, well, you did a great job on these. I love this pair with the buckles and I want to try a buckle pair because on mine I just did little mm -hmm. little snaps so let's get to hammering this All pair. Right. I'll give these to you. Thank you very much. I love this fabric. <laughs> so what you need is obviously a hammer mm -hmm. and you need some sort of like wood surface because okay. the last thing you want to do is ruin your studio yes. table. All right. Been there, done yeah, that. Yeah, sadly, <laughs> that's a hard lesson to learn. <laughs> and another thing that you might want to do is just always with an extra scrap piece of fabric, like mm. here we've tested out that stitching and I just tested a rivet too because you can do rivets <gasps> here as well. Well, I yeah. love that idea. Yes. yes. Oh, and then what is this? This is like a little, yeah. uh, it says one of a kind on it. Yes. Nice. So, so I love it. That way you make all these little details that make it your own exactly. and make it super special. So I'm just going to put that right there awesome. with the rivets. But before I do that, I want to get these buckles okay. into place. All right. So, so. what I'm going to do is these go right about there. And what I like to do is actually use this as a template. So I'm just going to okay. push a little bit and you can oh, see, yeah. and you now you know yeah. where where to do your little marking. Okay. And you can use an awl. You can mm -hmm. go like this, right in the center. Oh, nice. Oh, and that has a nice, uh, well, like kind of rubber yeah, thing, so, so you're not gonna it. mess it up or anything. And look at that, a Got hole. Your nice and hole. you can make it bigger by pushing through, because you can see it gets bigger. Yep. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to take this piece right here and push it up through that hole okay. that was created. Then we're gonna take this okay. piece, put it on top. Right. And it just fits there. And do you yeah. need to like screw it or anything or just lay it right on top? It kind of just automatically yeah, it attaches, kinda, Yeah, right? it could pop okay. on. And then I'm gonna hammer it down. So what I'm gonna do is I want to protect this top. So I'm just gonna use oh. something like that. Yes, okay. Oh, great, and that helps protect it so that you don't scratch yeah, it Yeah, so if Got you it. hammer right on here, you're gonna dent it. So it doesn't have, it could be another wood block, mm -hmm. it could be another like tool like this, like from a kit that you, yes. that you get. So I just like to use something. There we go, so that is all. Oops, in place. And you can even hammer it from this side. Okay. This side too. Oh, nice. Yeah, can, that fits good. There we go. All right, just lay that right on there. So lots of different options and ways that you can get those to be solid mm -hmm. inside there. Yeah, the key is you just want to make sure that it's nice and flush with that um, and like this is hitting the fabric right, right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and, that's so easy. I know. And then with the other part, so you just do the same thing on this side. Okay. And then these pieces. All right, there you go. So you want to thread it like this. Okay. Through there. So you're gonna go up through there and then down and then 
flip it over and then in this part, just kind of squeeze it in there. Okay. Tweezers can even help you oh, yeah. like push this through. All right, there we go. That's a little tricky. Yep. Yep. A little but, tricky. But you want it to yeah. be, like, it needs to be a little bit tight because it holds it. Okay. So now I'm really yanking yeah. it. And if you want, you can pull that up and it comes down like this. <gasps> Voila! And then look at how yes. professional that looks. Like, oh. these look like you got it at a store. Yes. Isn't that so cute? I love it. Mm hmm All right, well, good. So that's putting on the buckles. Yes. And then is it a pretty similar process if you're going to be putting on, like, using the rivets for that? Yes, it okay. is. Yeah, I'll just um, put on these right here. So what I'm going to okay. do... All right, and we're going to be putting yeah, this on, right? Yeah, can you right? open that yes, for me? Yes, I certainly can. And these are just really cute. You can get these. Um, this one is from Dritz, yes. but um, they're just wonderful. It's like kind of a little leather, and it says yeah. one of a kind. And on these rivets, what you want, so it's two pieces, so they're nice from both sides. And you want one um, with a long kind of stem, and then one with, like, the no step. Okay. So they, and they all they come, come in the together. package. Yeah, like they that. all come okay, in the package. Great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of center that, like so. Love it. Yeah, and yes. then what I can do is go like this. Here, why don't you hammer? All right, I'm gonna hammer. Nice, okay, now this All one. Right. All right, Perfect. that is so solid, I love that. Yeah, so now we're gonna take the one with the longer end to it and just bring it up. Yep, poke it right through. Right through that hole, and then we can stick this okay. in there, and then we take the one with the shorter, and then comes with a tool that looks like this. So you can see this fits nicely nice, in there. Yes. So I'm going to put that right on there. Okay, get your hammer out again. And look <gasps> at that. So cute. Yeah. I so easy. love it. So easy to do. Um, and again, you can put these rivets on points of stress, like mm -hmm. on the pocket. Yep, you can like put them like even, right there. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. And it really does give it that more professional look. Like it really looks like something that you bought at the store. Mm -hmm. um, that's always the best when somebody comes up to you and they're just like, did you make, or uh, did you buy those? Or where'd you buy those? Yeah. And you're like, I made them. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Here, All right. give it a good, oh, here, you got it. Perfect. All right. Oh, I love it. Yes. One of a kind. All right. One of a kind. That yes. sounds great. So, Meg, you are the queen of hacks. What are some hack ideas that you're going to try? Because I know you're going to try them, and I know you've already done some. Yes. So, oh, yes, on these, I did uh, a pocket on the back yes. and one on the side. And I put it nice, I put it high up because mm. uh, I like my pockets high up. And then, obviously, I use snaps. But I want to do one, too, where I finish these edges with binding, and then they come up and create straps. You can tie them in a ball, you know, nice. do, do some fun things like that. Then obviously, uh -huh. you know, cut them short. Yeah. And I want to make a pair where I'm using scrap fabrics. I cut everything oh. in a different color. Oh, I'm going to cut this, this, that. this, this, strap. Use Perfect. up your scraps. Yep. Crazy. Yeah. All right. And those are just the ones I can think of off the top of my head. But I know if I did some research, I can think of a million ways to hack these long mod overalls. Yeah, and we might even be uh, doing some uh, some of those on, yes. on film so yes. or on video. So be sure to look out for those in the future. Mm -hmm. Well, Meg, I am so excited because those are going to be my new overalls. Yes. And I, I just I can't wait to wear them and sport them all around town. Well, we hope you guys have enjoyed uh, learning all about these Longmont overalls and that we hope you make a pair of yourself. Yeah. And if you make it, make sure to post on social media and tag us. And most importantly, make sure to like this video, comment, and subscribe to this YouTube channel, So Daily Network, so you never miss another sew along. And thanks for joining us again. Happy stitching.